Hello, as promised, I'm back again. Wanted to make sure that we connected as we get up on Sunday morning. I know that we'll be gathering in electronic ways to be able to worship. And uh, so I want to offer some time for a message, a re some reflection on scripture. And uh, there are going to be some other resources that I'll tell you about in a second. Uh, just a reminder that uh, the reason that we are not getting together is because we want to show care and concern for one another. We want to show respect for our authorities as well who are advising us to avoid mass gatherings. We want to try to uh, do all that we can to avoid the spread of the COVID-19 virus. And we don't do that out of fear. We do that out of sensibility, out of a sense of love for our neighbors and wanting to see this uh, come under control. Uh, we also don't do it out of fear because we know that uh, we serve a God who cares for us even in the midst of trying times. Just a reminder that as we gather electronically in worship, uh, there are some things that we won't be able to do the same way. One of those is uh, to give our offering. Offering, of course, is a part of our worship, and uh, it's also part of sustaining the ministry that God has given us. We want to remind you that even though you can't drop a gift in the offering plate today, there is the opportunity to go to our website, go to the bottom of the home page, and there's a button you can click that allows you to give electronically. Uh, as we move forward this week, our board is meeting to discuss further plans for how we will be responding during this time. So stay tuned for more information. Uh, you can always check on our website, which is westviewbaptist.ca. You can also go to our Facebook page for other information there as well. We also are planning to link some music videos to this message. If you are connecting with us through our website and the YouTube channel, uh, go to uh, down below the video. You'll see where it says uh, show more and you click on that. It should give you some links to our music videos. Uh, music associated with today that our band had planned to play for us and lead us in singing, but you can listen to it as a part of your worship today. And of course, I want to uh, start with some scripture. We are working our way through some parables that Jesus told in the Gospel of Luke. Luke recorded them. And uh, today we want to read from Luke chapter 12. We're reading, starting at verse 35, going down to verse 40. And there it says, these are the words of Jesus. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. I said last week that these parables are dangerous stories and that at this point in the life of Jesus, he's actually set his sights on Jerusalem. He knows that he is going to the cross. He is going to be executed for the sins of the world. He's heading toward Jerusalem with that in mind, and he's coming from a time of incredible popularity. The crowds have been following him. They've been eager to see what he does. They've been eager to engage with him. As he heads toward Jerusalem, though, things start to change, and his popularity also changes. It begins to slide and dip. Um, these stories certainly didn't help. They're dangerous stories because He's saying things that aren't necessarily what people want to hear. And in this particular passage, he, he tells two stories. One is a parable. It has the language of a teaching story. It's not a true story. The second one is a little bit different. But both of them are dangerous. Both of them speak about being ready. You know, that idea of readiness is something that uh, we can all relate to right now. Uh, there has been a growing sense over the last few weeks that we need to be ready for what's coming with this uh, with this uh, illness that has been spreading around the world. We've been watching it on the news, and there have been all sorts of different responses to it. 
now we're at a time where there's been a label attached to it. We're calling it a pandemic. And uh, certainly that kicks us into high gear. It causes governments to, to, uh, to respond in a different way and local authorities as well. It also rings alarm bells in a lot of our minds. Uh, so what we had been thinking about and what had been hypothetical is actually starting to become very real. And what we're also noticing is that maybe we weren't quite as ready as we thought. What's interesting is, you know, if there have been scientists who've been saying for years and years, we need to be ready. There is such a global community right now. There's so much international travel. There's such a such high concentrations of people in so many parts of the world that should a virus uh, begin to grow that we're not used to or that's new to us, it could spread so easily. We've, we've heard this but it was easy for us to kind of slough it off because everything seemed to be ticking along pretty well. Readiness means getting prepared before anything happens. Jesus tells the first story, and it's uh, again, it's not a true story, but it's a story that for the most part people could relate to. It's a story of uh, a man who is the head of a household, probably a very wealthy man because he has servants, and he's been invited to a wedding. He's off at the banquet. His servants are back at home. Their job is just to have the house ready and to be waiting for him when he comes back. Because when he comes back, they're gonna to need to assist him, welcome him, feed him as necessary. And uh, that's their job. They're waiting up. Nothing much is happening, but they're waiting and watching for him to come back. What's interesting, and this is the twist in this particular story, Jesus tells that much and people get it. That's what servants did. But then he says the servant or the master comes back and the servants greet him. And suddenly the servants become the master and the master becomes the servant. There's a, a reversal of roles. The master begins to serve the servants. This was not anything that anybody in that crowd would have expected. Probably it might have... Uh, evoke some laughter from them because where do you ever see that? This is something that Jesus does. He tells these stories and he's getting at a, at a point, but he's also, he's also engaging them in a way that their imagination is there, but they're also, they're also being tipped off balance just a little bit. He surprises them along the way. He surprises them with that particular detail. And then he goes into another, another story. What's interesting here is that the second story, the way he tells it isn't like a parable. He's not telling it like it's a teaching story. He actually refers to it in a way that makes it sound like it's a headline from the newspaper, something that that crowd had heard about. They knew that this had happened, a true story. What he says is, if the owner of the house had known the hour the thief was coming, he seems to be referring to somebody specific. They all know in the crowd who he means. It doesn't have to say a name. But he's talking about something that actually happened. An owner of a house and his house got broken into. What was the issue? The issue was they were all at home. They all felt safe and secure. The master was there, so the servants were asleep. No one was ready. If they had known, they would have been standing guard. They would have been ready to prevent a house invasion, a home robbery. You know, I said that both of these have a surprise ending. The surprise ending at that one is that Jesus then goes on to say, you've got to be ready because the son of man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Now, Jesus is not referring to some vague person when he says son of man earlier in his ministry. And we see it in Luke chapter five, verse 24. He makes it clear that when he talks about the son of man, uses that term, that label, he's talking about himself. And it's a term with, with a history to it. We see it in the book of Daniel, where that term is referring to someone very important in God's kingdom. Jesus is referring to himself as someone very important that they need to be waiting for. They need to be ready for. Now he's standing right in front of them. But he's saying, you've got to be ready for me. You know, Jesus is telling them that it's not just life, it's not even just some vague concept of the kingdom that they've got to be ready for. They've got to be ready for him. In fact, they've got to be ready to serve him. 
They've got to be ready to make a decision that, that he is the one that they're waiting for. Jesus has put it out there that the real point for all of them is to keep their eyes on him. Now, in one case, there's a happy ending. In the first story, the parable, there's a happy ending. The servants are ready. The master comes back. They, and then suddenly, the master is treating them like royalty. There's a happy ending there. The second story, not so. In that one, no one's ready. In that one, the thief breaks in, gets what they want, takes off with uh, armloads of wealth. The master wasn't ready. The servants weren't ready. There's loss and there's devastation. We can't get into the details of every single thing in each of these story meaning something. Jesus is letting each story represent one thing. And that one thing is, are you ready? Are you ready? Because if you're ready, then there is a good story. There's a happy ending there. And if you're not ready, there's a devastating story. You know, right now, we're in a situation where not only is there a physical, biological pandemic in the world, there's also a spiritual pandemic. And it's not anything new. But there have been a lot of people who have been quick to dismiss it. Quick to say there's no real need to worry. The pandemic is this, that we all have convinced ourselves that we don't have to worry about what God thinks, about who God is, that we can create God into whoever we want him to be. He's a God we can't see anyway. It's kind of like the threat of a robber. You know, you don't see it till it's there. God is a reality, and Jesus kept trying to point out to people, God is here, God is among you. And you need to be ready to respond because God is not a vague notion. God is a real person and he's asking you to follow him. To say no, to say, you know what, there's no crisis yet is a denial of the reality. The reality is God is walking among us right now. Jesus Christ is alive. He's calling us to trust him. And he's asking us not to delude ourselves, asking us not to convince ourselves that we can just make God into whoever we want, a safe God who lets us do what we want. Because the reality is God knows us. He made us. He knows what's best for us. And when he asks something of us, it's because he knows that's what we need. He's asking us to follow him and trust him. Jesus was telling the crowd that day, you need to make a decision about me. Don't just listen to the stories. Don't just be entertained by what I'm doing. You've got to decide, are you trusting me or not? And just like the servants in the first parable, if you're trusting, then you're awake, wide-eyed, ready to serve. You know, in practical terms, that means that uh, those of us who are trusting Jesus today, and I know that not necessarily everybody who's watching this is trusting him. Not everybody has made that decision. But if you are, then part of what you need to do, part of serving him is actually by serving each other. And I know that seems strange and maybe a little bit ironic since we're, most of us, we're in our own homes right now. But there are chances for us uh, through the phone, through the through email, through social media, to be connecting with one another a little bit more than we used to. Checking in to see how people are. There's a chance for us to connect creatively with our neighbors around us. See how they are. Serve them. And in serving them, we're serving Jesus Christ. In fact, in Matthew chapter 25, beginning at verse 31, Jesus talked about how the little things that we do for those around us, we're actually doing for him. He wants his servants to be ready. He wants his servants to be serving. And he wants us to be looking to him, wide-eyed, waiting, ready to respond. Jesus is alive 
And he's asking you and I to trust him, to watch for him, to serve him. I hope that today you have a chance to serve him by serving someone else. Maybe that hasn't even occurred to you. Take the time to stop and think how you can. And I hope that beyond listening to this message, you'll also take some time to talk to him, to let him know that you love him, that you want your life to be in his hands, and then find ways to show him that you mean it. He's calling us to be servants. Let's go and do that in the name of Jesus.